Hi, I'm Paco Tolson. I was in this show of Be It Gone at Manhattan Theater Club. I played many, many roles, as you'll see. I, I was in um, 10 different wigs and a bunch of different um, wonderful costumes. It's all me. I'm still in it. And I'm only in it at the beginning and at the end, but then I also pop in a hundred times in between. And um, I'm just really excited to revisit this. It's like four years ago and um, my memories are all really fresh. So I can't wait. Hey everyone, um, my name is John Hoche. Um, I was in the original cast of The Agon at MTC. Uh, I played Nyan uh, predominantly, um, as, long, as well as a few other characters. Um, it was a truly a joyful time. Uh, I can't believe it's been uh, almost four years, I think, since we've done it. Um, so I'm really excited to look back at some fond memories, hopefully. <laughs> To begin, this is a story about a completely made up man named Quang. Sup, bitches? <laughs> and a completely not real woman named Tom. Damn, there's a lot of white people up in here. <laughs> and though they are Vietnamese, born and raised there, for the purposes of this tale, it is to be noted that this will be their speaking syntax. Yo, what's up, white people? <laughs> Any of you fly ladies want to get up? This is my favorite part of the show. And on the occasion when it occurs hey that an American character should appear. Because everybody's out there together. Like we're like, we're going to smash oh, this. Gang, Look at you. Waffle fries, oh my gosh. I'm a weirdo. Spouting American <laughs> nonsense, which sounds very American, but yet incredibly confusing for anyone not natively from here. This is a story about two people, both from Vietnam, both 30 years That's the age, Sriracha shirt, the famous Sriracha shirt that is immediate, immediate authenticity. Kui, Kui Gwen actually this has that shirt, I believe, yeah. right? Yeah. That's the reason why you're wearing it. It's a story it. about falling in love. And it all takes place in the year of 1975. And right now, the completely made up Wang Wen is with his best friend, Yang. <laughs> I never dropped that helmet. Ah! <laughs> uh, did you? No, I never did. I Are you sure? Yeah. Yes. This is one of my favorite parts of the show. Just riding a motorcycle, being an idiot. My favorite part is coming up where you, you eat a bug on the highway. <laughs> Classic. You know, this part is so fascinating because it, it, in, in addition to the prologue, yes, in addition to the prologue, it's like, this is not the show you're gonna, that you thought it was. This is gonna be really, really interesting. Dude. Yeah, yeah. Everybody wanted that leather jacket too. That was such a hot jacket. Uh, projection design. Lortel Award. I thought it was very, very cool to have the the two screens that kind of sometimes were one picture and sometimes were able to do separate pictures. No. It's April 29th, 1975. We South Vietnamese go fleeing to save our lives. A mass immigration Shit just got real. dealt devastation, humiliation in the face of complete annihilation of a This might, I think, I don't think I've ever seen this. I know, we were all backstage changing furiously. One with guns and the murder of sons. Those on the run have lost their She's super fierce. We're the ones they call yeah. Go Jenny. Oh. But can we make a new life now that old lives are done? That's your character, Bobby, who yeah. only spoke in strange American terms. It was very cool. Very cool. Uh, that's what it would be like if I had bangs. They got Camp India Town in Pennsylvania and more islands, some spot called Arkansas. Gonna start again now that Saigon's gone. Gonna start again, steal my soul, make it strong. Not a dime to my name. Gonna start again, get my heart past the she was right about you. That was awesome. What was she right about? <laughs> that you are very Ladies and gentlemen, how Klee Gwynn's mom and dad met right here. My mother said I was very fine. Yeah. She said, I have a daughter, and she is motherfucking fine. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Family show. Yo, your mom has a potty mouth. Are you hitting on me? No. Yes. 
sort of. I guess I am. All we got now is what's on our back. Most basic things in life now we lack. The odds against us completely stacked. Trying to forget our old lives, they're completely cracked. But here I tell myself I can't be heard again because everyone I know. I think I got hit in the face with this um, piece of luggage one night. <laughs> oh, because she would throw it off, yeah. right? Yeah, she would just yeah. throw it right off. Yeah, got me right in the face. Oh, this is this is a Paco Tolson big scene right Ooh. here. Oh, Look yeah. at that hair. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's still me. But it's also Barry Gibb. <laughs> oh, that's one of your other characters, John. The uh, the nerdy younger brother. <laughs> Very Clark Kent, as I would. I, I, I've never actually I think I've seen pictures of me as a character. Yeah. There's Sammy Kwan as the grandma. Him again. You know he wants to fuck you, right? Hey. He doesn't understand what I'm saying. Look at him. He's stupid. Yeah. yeah. Paco, you want to talk a little bit about Howdy, your speech buddy. patterns in this? Get her done, little lassie. Yeehaw. Howdy. Yeah, it's basically all Americanese, oh, howdy, it, but it's howdy, it's this wonderful howdy, project of howdy, reversing howdy, the expectations howdy, howdy, howdy. so that the people language. who speak uh, in an urbane kind oh, of hip way are the immigrants because it's really we're centering their story. So the bacon Americans just sound like outrageous cheeseburger hungry. yeehaw yes. nonsense. <laughs> Yes, um, I am hungry, thank but God the the way thing. it affects people is so amazing because they'd be like after the show people would come up to you and go like ah oh, cheeseburger yeah, yeah French fries yeah. French fries is he gonna offer you his they just want to be a part of it even though it was like skewering Town? like the white Good gaze food. and Bring and like breaking down. open how we see uh, oh. art about Vietnam it was just like people loved it pull over, man. it was so it was so irreverent uh, so effective pantomime uh -huh. and getting okay? off of a motorcycle. <laughs> Look at this physical work. Oh my god. Right Miss that. To this day, this yeah. is one of my favorite pairs of jeans I've ever worn on stage. Oh, oh, Custom. Yeah. Oh, there's also uh, weed in this show, everyone. <laughs> Spoiler alert. But it's interesting, it's that was actually a, a, you know, a, a vape pen that was covered in kind of paper and then so we could still see the, the light as we lit into, uh, we inhaled, so stage magic everyone, stage magic. Yeah. That's a pretty amazing jacket too, John. I purchased this jacket after the show. Did you? So it's in my closet. I don't play dumb motherfucker. You should have worn it today. About. No, I thought about it. I thought about it. You seriously don't remember That is a huge joint. That's just like the biggest joint possible. You got to play to the back row. Uh, I like you. What? I like you. No. Don't do that. So everything on their plate right now, I believe, is not real. But they used to have... Yes, you can. Look at chicken nuggets in, in a lot of the scenes when they were eating, hey, I'm not I'm and you, somehow, I'm gloriously, right. the leftovers would end up at my dressing station every are. night. Like I like you. I'm broken but unbreakable, defeated yet undefeatable, unstoppable, can seem impossible. I'll get home, however implausible. Just watch me face. I love this rap. Yep. That was a really cool one because on the billboard, yeah, do it in a helicopter. the billboard was a was a chopper that you guys were gonna fly 
and it just like created this wonderful illusion. So simple. But there was a door in the wall and it became the door of the yeah. chopper too. It was pretty amazing. Yeah. And the sound was really loud and we had to really, really scream <laughs> for that scene. It was, it was pretty intense. Ooh, split screen. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's another uh, one I love playing right antagonists. There. Yeah, all the Americans were uh, very antagonistic. No. It takes a toll on like, you spiritually. Out, like to a restaurant. And why would I do that? Wow. Well, this is um, pure you. fan service. No, well, I both Jenny want. and Ray are taking us to the gun show. Ba -ba -pow, <laughs> ba -ba -pow. <laughs> Which way? Look at her beach. taking us to the yeah, gun show. Yeah, yeah. That was an. That, she was flexing right there. <laughs> that was a real working bike. That could go 60 miles an hour. I can't read, and your English is better than mine, so I, I can't. Thought... What? I can't. That's why I have the bike. I'm gonna use it to drive to California. Oh. When? This scene is so heartbreaking because she really opens up to him, and and he he says, "There's something more important. I I can't do it." And she spent the whole show trying to break out of her shell and love somebody after being hurt. Yeah. And then he, he says, I have to leave. It's so heartbreaking. What happened? You're going back to Vietnam. Fuck this shit. I'm a warrior, bitch. The world keeps hitting. I don't give no shit. They wanted music and rap, especially, to kind of be an element within the show. And um, I thought it was so cool how um, that kind of bridged an, a gap and made the show... Uh, a little more timeless in a sense um, and uh, I thought it was very cool oh that's a little uh, glimpse into the end of the show Grace character has now aged and is telling you the story something about you about mom this was like the the gut punch of the whole show despite the dynamics of each scene being really um, profound this put the entire show that you just watched into perspective and was the coup de grace of um, the perspective shift, the lens that you're watching the show through. Because Kui himself is, or the playwright, I should say, is revealed to have a white Western gaze when dealing with the Vietnam era and the story of Vietnam. And his own family has not been able to say yet it's they can't reckon with what's happened so they're so um hurt by by the tragedy of it all and he finally explodes and releases all this stuff he sacrificed everything in vietnam and now he he just wants to be american and talk about american stuff and his life in america and the playwright's mission is to unearth all of that but in fact if we take the playwright at his word and it's not a story about war the play is not a story about war it's really about the relationships in the family and this incredible moment where they both break past these obstacles that they have in their connection to one another and their connection to America. Tell me about Vietnam. When I thought come to America, that's all I hear. Very nice, very smart young people apologizing for uh, America's interference. I tell you, before America's interference, we were getting slaughtered. And now, 40 years later, all I hear is the politicians using Vietnam as a symbol for a mistake. Also that and, um, you know, America's view is that, you know, Vietnam was a bit, Vietnam. was a failure and a mistake a lot of times. It's very controversial, but, you know, Ray's character here is saying that without America's help, like, he'd be dead. And, you know, they're very thankful that America came in and, and stepped in. If you wanting to know about the Vietnam, then let me tell you about the Vietnam. If you wanting to know about the Vietnamese people, then let me tell you about its people. But if you only wanting to know about the war, then go rent a movie. I remember talking to a vet who was very thankful for this um, this take on the mindset of of America and America's involvement 
in Vietnam because uh, he felt the same way, you know. Mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be cowboys. Paco Tilson singing on stage, giving us that sweet, sweet tenor voice. <laughs> it's not a tenor, it's a baritone, you. I did try and sing a little higher to, to get that emotional register. Mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be cowboys. Cause they'll never stay home and they're always alone. Even with someone they love. Thank you everyone for watching. Um, I hope you had as fun of a, of a time revisiting this stuff as we did. Um, I know I miss it a ton and there is another one in the pipeline. So if you, if you enjoyed that, you'll probably like what's coming. I just want to say thanks for everyone who uh, tuned in and watched this, um, this walk down memory lane for uh, Paco and I. Um, Via Gun is a show that uh, I hold near and dear uh, to my heart. I loved doing it. Um, I had a wonderful, incredible, amazing time at, um, at MTC. And, um, and thanks again.